color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. The Reverend Tom Winter has come home. The clerical collar he wore for so many years is gone. The ability to reach out and touch the lives of needy people is gone. All that is left is the remains of his wife's final bout of drinking. The house is a shambles and the adjacent chapel. Here, Tom worshiped and sought guidance and gave his small town congregation some measure of comfort and reassurance. Here, in the chapel he once loved. So you've come back, huh? I'm glad, Tom. Only for my things. Where were you? Boston. I was looking over for you. Your wife's in the hospital. She's been drinking ever since you left her. Tom, look. She needs you. <laughs> Desperately. I can't fulfill that need anymore. Yes, you can. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, look, let's go to her. Then tell her that. She doesn't want my sympathy. No, no, she doesn't. She wants you. That's all I can give her. Sympathy. Now, Tom, I can keep her from drinking as long as she's at the hospital, yes. But drinking is... It's just a symptom. You know that. See, you're a cause. I've already been lectured on the difference between symptom and cause by my superior in Boston. All right, look, let's, uh, why don't we get cleaned up and we'll go see her, huh? I have nothing to say to we'll her. We'll think of something to say. The only thing I can say to her, honestly, is thank you. Thank you for shoving me at Jill. For showing me what's really important. Thank you for forcing me to leave the church. For helping me find a life I couldn't find by myself. Thank you. Now, uh, you think Susan wants to hear that? Tom, you still have some responsibility to her. Not anymore. She is still your wife. She has my name. That's all she has. All right. What do you have? What do you have? Goodbye. Tom, listen. I'm going to ask you to stay away from Jill Smith. Now, I may not have a choice. She may not want to see me. But I'm not a minister anymore. I'm just a man. And I don't have to accept no for an answer. I love her. Now, I can say that now without the words choking on my collar or on my marriage. She doesn't feel anything towards she you. She wouldn't allow her. herself to feel anything before. That's all changed now. I can offer her a life. A life we both want and we both need. I can make her see that. I can make her change her mind. No, you can't because they've taken Kelly away from her. Because of you. The only thing she's ever loved in this world, they've taken away because of you. You can't make her change her mind. You're the reason she left this place. You're the thing she ran away from because of you. Know that. No, because you were too busy thinking of your own fantasies. Where is she? I can help her get Kelly back. I'll go to the authorities. No, no, baby, Tom, listen. I can't let you do that. Now, go ahead. You can tell me it's none of my business if you want, but she came to me for help. And she still has a chance, you see. The judge left the door open. She still has a chance to get Kelly back. So I can't let you slam the door in her face. I love her. Well, that doesn't make any difference. She doesn't love you. Well, you have to face it. Accept it. Learn to live with it. Just think for a minute, huh? I mean, this is where you belong. My God, come back before there are no pieces to pick up. This is God's house. The rest is Susan's. I don't belong in either.
on the right there. This one? No. This one? No. This one? No, Norma, look, let's forget it, huh? You win. Take it away. Okay. I'm sorry I ruined your game. No, you didn't ruin it. The only thing you ruined tonight was my dinner. I have to go home. What are you having for dinner? Cold soup, cold meat, cold coffee, and warm ice cream. <laughs> look, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Norm. Huh? How does a guy invite his wife over to your house for dinner? She's got to learn table manners. I mean, stop using knives and forks and embarrass me. Listen, I'm worried about her. She's alone now. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'd like you to look out for her if you can. The day that somebody has to look out for her. Somebody has to. Look, Rod. Why don't you tell me what's really on your mind? I just can't help thinking about it, what her life is. She got a husband who may never walk again. I doubt that. You think she's giving up hope? I don't like to think she is. Well, she's not. All she cares about or thinks about is you. Look, Rod, what do you think she's doing? Sitting at home making up a list of all the eligible men in town, from Stephen to Eli? I guess after you've been in this place for a while, it kind of plays tricks on your mind. You're right. You're right, let's drop it. No, let's not drop it. Apparently, you don't trust her. Well, I do. I trust her, Norm, I trust her. I guess, I guess my, my mouth is working overtime to make up for my legs. I know you've been looking out for her. Thank you. There are no doubts, huh? No doubts. Okay. Listen, next time you get bored, start thinking about all the taxes we're gonna have to pay on the profits we're making, okay? I'll go halves. I'll see you tomorrow. Open for business. Well, you're a little late. 